Hello friends, welcome to my channel Data Making. Uh, in this video, I am going to discuss about how to read a MySQL table uh, using a PySpark. So if you have a, a MySQL RDBMS database, you might have a, a one or multiple tables, right? So how you want to access the MySQL table from the PySpark program? So using the JDBC connector. So you will be using the MySQL JDB connector uh, for uh, connecting the MySQL database. I will walk through you how to do that okay in the program okay let us discuss using the program i will log into my uh, virtual machine okay before that let me minimize my recording window okay so this is my uh, the python program which reads the uh, uh, mysql table okay so there are uh, uh, two ways you can actually execute this PySpark program. Okay, first I'll explain the program, then I will tell you uh, what are the two way to uh, run this program. One is using Spark Summit, another is running from the using the PyCharm itself. Okay, I'll just uh, remove this. Uh, uh, these are the things I am not using it, so I'll just remove this. So I, I have the. Uh, <coughs> the PySpark package okay which is a, a spark session object, uh, object class which i just uh, package which i uh, imported from the package pyspark.sql the the class name is the spark session okay so because we are going to use this uh, uh, create a spark session using this class okay so import that so okay so basically we are using the mysql connector right so you can download this mysql connector uh, using the uh, you can you can go to the mysql website and download the connector i will give the link which where you can download the uh, uh, this connector i will give the link in the uh, this video's uh, description you can take it from there okay so basically what you need to do is there is a property called uh, spark.jars okay if you are running uh, from pycharm you need to set this uh, uh, spark.jars uh, okay in the configuration so if you are running from spark summit there is uh, another way to do it i will tell you in the later video of this uh, later section of this video okay so you need to add this uh, uh, spark dot uh, jars as the, the the mysql connector jar so the, i am using a mysql uh, version 5.6 i guess so uh, this is my um, a connector mysql connector okay so you can you can actually uh, download based on your mysql version you can download the connector so these are the basically if you are running from local mode only this property is enough but if you want to run it on cluster mode, basically you might require uh, uh, the executor extra class path and uh, uh, extra library and driver class path. The, the same jar you need to refer using these properties also for running on cluster mode. For running on local mode, I have only this uh, property is enough. Okay, so using these properties, you can create the Spark session object. Once you have a Spark session object, uh, I am actually setting the log level as only error. So basically, you will get an info level. I don't want to see the info level because lot of uh, uh, log will come so after that what you need to do is I just declared uh, variables for storing my mysql connection details uh, basically you can you can if you want to uh, if you don't want to hard code these values you can take it from any file property file or json file whatever it is so for simplicity's sake I just uh, uh, coded so basically you need a driver class for from the for the mysql jar Okay, so the driver is the com.mysql.jdbc.driver. Okay, that is your driver class. Then you need to uh, just uh, declare a variable for table, table name, and the host name, and the port number. This is a default port number is the 3306, and the username and password, and the database name. So using this uh, MySQL connection, I am going to prepare the JDBC URL. Okay, that's important. So before that, actually, I am going to read the uh, data from the table called users. I will tell you uh, uh, what, what is the user's uh, uh, structures, uh, user table structure. So it has a four, uh, three columns, user ID and user name and city. I'll just uh, query and show you the sample data for the MySQL table. This is the MySQL uh, command line interface. If you have a workbench, you can actually use the workbench also to MySQL workbench also to access the uh, MySQL table. Okay, this is the, my data in my uh, table. Okay. I have five four rows. Okay, I want to access this uh, four rows in my uh, Spa, PySpark. Uh, using a PySpark, I will actually get it as a data frame. I will I will tell you how to do this. 
now go back to the program okay so i just prepare this it's a generally you can give a, a table name directly okay so uh, or you can actually form the query like uh, as a derived query so basically select star from the table name as the users okay so that's a query a select query i'm making and i need to form the jdbc url so jdbc url format is like this jdbc colon mysql colon slash less followed by host name and colon port number slash database name this is the uh, uh, the the url of the mysql uh, uh, mysql <coughs> jdbc url i'm just printing that so if you want to read the uh, mysql table and and get it as a data frame so in the spark 2.x uh, version also so this is this program is basically i am running on spark uh, version 2.4.4 uh, from spark 2.x they, they introduced actually the uh, spark session uh, using the spark session you can access the um, mysql table if you are using a uh, spark version uh, uh, 1.x then you need to use the jdbc rdd uh, uh, using that you can access so basically this is for spark 2 version okay so using the spark session object read dot format of jdbc and provide this uh, option parameter to provide your uh, database details so your jdbc url using the property pro url property and uh, using the driver property provide the driver which we defined here and the table so you can provide the table name or you can actually uh, if you are actually writing a sql query you can just write it as a um, derived query and put the select query here and username password you set these properties using this uh, the spark will go and read the database uh, the details which you specified here and it will actually uh, get it into the data frame okay so uh, this is my data frame this is a user data 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 frame okay so using this data frame i'll just do the show show is the method which actually shows the data from the data frame okay so uh, this uh, 10 rows it is only four rows i'm just giving a 10 comma false this property actually means that uh, uh, i don't want to wrap the columns basically if your uh, column uh, values uh, as a, uh, bigger it will actually wrap i don't want to wrap it i just want to show the full content that's what this so this is a, a simple program okay so i'll just run this program so i'm going to run it from the pycharm so i have to provide this all this jars uh, in this the while creating this spark session object when i use the spark summit i'll tell you how to run it so i'll just uh, run this so it is going to create the spark session object and it is going to refer in the spark session object it is going to set the, all these configurations uh, for this jar location okay because using this JGBT, jdbc dot jar only mysql jdbc connector uh, jar only the spark is going to access the mysql database so it is going to this is the jdbc url which i talked about this is where you need to form the jdbc url okay so it has read the table so we have four rows here okay this is how you need to access the mysql table using a spice per program now we will run the same thing from the using a spark summit command okay so i'll just comment out this code because this is already set right so i'll just comment out this code and i will uncomment the code which just creates the spark session object is it is not set any jar location so we are going to pass it uh, during the spark summit command okay so this is a simple spark session object remaining code all same so i just saved it uh, now what i'm going to do is i have the spark submit command so if you are running on as i said the local mode you just provide a spark submit and followed by master url local and iphone iphone jar you just provide the iphone iphone jar property with the of uh, the jar location okay this is enough and uh, followed by the your program okay if i run this it will actually uh, run the program without any error i will run it here if you are running on cluster mode you need to set the other property which i mentioned uh, the driver class path and the driver extra library and uh, executor uh, uh, class path so it is running the spark summit command it is executing my pyspark program it build the uh, escalate query and the jdbc url uh, it is running basically it is going to query the data from the table and make as a data frame see same same program it is worked so if you want to run the uh, cluster mode 
even for local mode also you can add these properties but it's not mandatory i'll just run this is the same thing for your understanding i'm going to run the same thing enter so again it is going to uh, use make use of this jdbc uh, mysql uh, connector uh, java ka java connector and it is going to query the database okay so uh, i hope you understood uh, uh, this program so how to connect the mysql uh, tables using a pyspark uh, if you have any doubt uh, please put it on the comment section of this video i will help you uh, thank you so much friends uh, see you in the next video